Hello students, this is lesson number 17, Introduction to Biotechnology of Standard 9th Science 2, lecture number 1 of this chapter. In this chapter, we are going to cover up the points, biotechnology, tissue and its type. Myself, Kavita Kobane from Gokhale Education Society's HL High School, English medium is going to cover up these topics in this video. First, we will try to understand what do we mean by biotechnology. A technology that uses biological system or living organisms to create or modify products for particular purpose or the art of utilizing micro living organisms and their products for the production of food drink medicine or for other benefits to the human race or other animal species in short if i will give you the example of insulin insulin it is needed in our body for the uh, digestion of glucose it is produced in our body only but there are some people who in those bodies the insulin is not produced so from outside there it is supplied to the body through the injections now this insulin is just in olden days it was taken out from the guts of the calf that is a baby of cow from their body that guts from that it is taken out means they have to cut down they have to kill the calf first and from their guts the insulin is taken out and it is injected but that is not enough the demand of insulin was more and the supply was less so because of this biotechnology we have developed the technology to produce the insulin in the industry by using the genes of our body and bacteria we just transferred the gene into the bacteria when we have injected the gene into the bacteria, the bacteria was just going living his life and along with that, with the help of that gene, he is able to produce the insulin also. And that insulin we started collecting, the process is done in the biotechnology and after that we are getting that insulin in a large quantity without cutting the calf or without slaughtering them. So like this, we are benefited because of this biotechnology. Biotechnology is also used in our food industry also that is called as a food biotechnology the traditional examples of biotechnology in which the microorganisms are used to produce the new variety here the classical plant breeding so new varieties of the plants is produced with the help of this biotechnology only then the rennet enzyme which we are used for making the cheese then yogurt that is the starter bacteria cultures means we require the bacteria for making the yogurt that is the lactobacillus bacteria which is helpful in making the curd into yogurt then the enology that is for wine making from the different different fruits we are making the different wines you know the grape wines so that is also the juice of the grape is fermented with the help of the yeast or with the help of the fungus okay and then it is converted into wine then brewing sciences that is the maltel barley there also it is fermented and from that we are getting these different different uh, drinks there. and the bread making you know that the bread is uh, made or it is uh, yeast is used for making the bread so it becomes spongy and it can a uh, little bit rich in proteins also so like this we are using the microorganisms for production of our food and for that biotechnology is used so that we can produce it in a large quantity in case of amoeba like uh, unicellular organisms all functions are performed by organelles of that single cell however most of the organisms are multicellular how are the various processes brought in their body group of cells they combine together and so as to perform the various functions of the body you know the sequence the letters when they combine together they make the words words combine together make the sentences sentences combine together they make a whole textbook similarly organization of the body of organisms follows a definite hierarchy you have already studied the uh, cells and the cell organs in that hierarchy a group of cells having a same origin same structure and same function is called tissue Millions of cells are present in our body of a multicellular organism. These cells are divided into different groups and each group perform a definite function. For example, we can perform movements due to contraction and relaxation of muscles. Conducting tissues in plants uh, transport water and food to all, all of its parts. All functions of the body occur with full efficiency due to the specific organization of cells and their division of work. 
so tissues tissues can be defined as a group of cells with similar shape function and termed as tissues they perform a cellular organizational level intermediate between the cells and organ system means it is a one level between the uh, cell and organ system in between that the tissue level is there organs are then formed by combining the functional groups of multiple tissues so in our body different types of cell combines they make the tissue and the tissue they combines and they makes the different types of organs in our body like this liver brain heart kidney intestine stomach lungs and they are performing different different functions in our body as we are multicellular organism there are two types of tissues they are simple tissues and complex tissues simple tissue means it is made up of only one type of cells all cells of this tissue work as individual units to perform a particular function the example is parenchyma collenchyma sclerenchyma or we can say epithelial tissues of animals and meristematic tissues of plants they are the example of simple tissues the other one is the complex tissue it is made up of more than one type of cells cells of this tissue work together as a one single unit to bring about a particular function example xylem and phylum tissue blood of animals also comes in the complex tissue next we have to see the difference between the plant tissues and animal tissues plants as you know they are the sedentary one means they are at one place only so most of their tissues are of the types that give only support there are dead cells in some tissues and these do not need much attention growth of plants occurs in specific parts of their body where the tissues contain contain dividing cells as animals have to move from place to place in search of food shelter and partners their energy needs are greater most of the tissues of animals are made up of living cells uniform growth occurs throughout the body of an animal and they do not have different dividing and non dividing tissues this means that the plants and the animals have different types of tissues to performing their necessary function here in the chart you can see the different types of tissues present in plant that is the meristematic tissue and permanent tissue in meristematic you will see the apical lateral and intercalary meristems it is means where the growth you can see here permanent tissues they are inside that that is of two types simple and complex in simple it comes parenchyma collenchyma and sclerenchyma complex it will come as xylem and phylum now in the next video we are going to see the function of each and every tissue of this plant Uh, tissues here next one is the animal tissues in the body of animals different organs come together to perform a specific function organs like the lungs trachea with the help of contraction and relaxation of some muscles bring about the function of respiration different tissues perform different functions in the organs accordingly tissues are classified into different types there are four main types of animal tissues connective tissue muscle tissue nervous tissue and epithelial tissue they all are just performing different different function in the organ observe the skin of the back of your hand with the help of a magnifying lens you will see closely attached squarish and pentagonal shapes this protective covering in our body or the animal body are called the epithelial tissues cells in these tissues are closely packed and form a continuous layer any material that enters the body first encounters epithelial tissues cells of epithelial tissues are separated from the cells of under cells of other underlying tissues by a fibrous membranes the skin mucous layer of the mouth mouth cavity inner surface of blood vessels walls of alveoli etc are made up of epithelial tissue here a picture of epithelial tissue it is given the first layer it is the epidermis that contains the cells that can produce that produces pigments and protect the immune system pigments means giving the color to your skin next layer is of dermis that contains the nerves endings oil and sweat sweat glands and hair follicles next one is the subcutaneous tissue layer it is made up of fats connective tissue and the larger blood vessels now we will see the types of epithelial tissues its name where they appear their location structure and function the first type is squamous epithelium it is appearing like a flat surface with, with the squarish or rectangular shapes here 
its location is it is in the inner surface of your mouth your food pipe that is the esophagus blood vessels and alveoli the structure is thin small flat cells and semi permeable membrane its function is to selective transport of substances means only selected substances only can enter through this membrane next one is the stratified epithelium tissue it is in the outer layer of your skin and it have many layers of cells the structure is like that and its function is prevention of wearing of organs and protection of organs next type of epithelial tissue is granular granular epithelium its location is inner layer of our skin and its structures are cell contains the vesicles packed with secretory materials and its function is secretion of sweat oil that is sebum and mucus you know the sweat is secreted by that glands and it is just removing out or giving out excreting out the extra salt which is produced in our body or which is not necessary and the water it is given out to keep the temperature low of your skin next one is the columnar columnar epithelium it name itself it will give you the meaning that it is just like a column shape the location of its it is inner surface of your intestine and elementary canal its structure is column like tall cells upper free surface bears folds made up of these cells at places of absorptions and its function is secretion of digestive juices and absorption of the nutrients wherever it is in the intestine they are absorbing absorbing and in the uh, digestive system is that is in the stomach it is just secreting out the juices like this it is functioning next is ciliated epithelium tissues its location is inner surface of your respiratory tracts and its structure is upper surface upper free surface of the cell bears minute hair like processes that is called as a cilia the function is to push the mucus and the air forward to keep the air passage free here the structure you can just see if you the it is not that much clear in this picture but if you just enlarge it you can just see that cilia is there and that is pushing the mucus and the whatever the disturbance is there in the uh, your wind pipe in the respiratory tract it is just moving it forward and clearing the tract all the time next one is the cuboidal epithelium it is the name itself will give you that the structure is like a cubo cubes its location is in the tubules of kidney that is in nephrons and in the salivary glands the structure as i told it is like like a cube so the cells are cuboidal its function is reabsorption of useful materials from urine secretion of saliva in the uh, excretory system we have learned about the nephrons and in that these cells are helping in reabsorbing the useful materials in that its assignment time now you have to read the lesson and revise it if you didn't understand a concept please watch the video again and again thank you for watching it stay home stay safe if you like the video please like share and subscribe we are we are going to meet in the next video soon till then take care and goodbye